Hello, today is June 9th, uh, 2014. Uh, today I'd like to touch base, um, talk about alcoholism. I'm actually doing this particular video for my website at www.clearviews.info. However, um, I'm going to also post it on Facebook uh, for my friends that uh, would like to see it there. Um, and hopefully um, the message will be uh, helpful to someone. Uh, understanding alcohol abuse and um, I'm going to actually read this and this comes from the Mayo Clinic uh, so bear with me as I'm reading it. alcoholism and alcohol abuse are due to many interconnecting factors including genetics how you were raised your social environment and your emotional health those are the main key factors people who have a family history of alcoholism or who associate closely with heavy drinkers are more than likely to develop drinking problems. Finally, those who suffer from mental health problems such as anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder are also particularly at risk uh, because alcohol may be used to self-medicate. Sorry about my phone ringing. <laughs> business as usual but those are the main factors now I can relate to uh, a lot of these particular factors um, is it genetic in my family I don't think so because uh, I look at my family history and I, I do see some some folks in my family that are that do drink I do believe most of them are socially uh, uh, drinks or social drinkers um, I mean, going back way in history in my family, I think there were some people that did use some sort of alcohol. Uh, there is, as far as I know, no drug addiction in my family, but there is some alcohol abuse. Um, so, yes, it might be in my genetics, but uh, um, I can't really pinpoint that that's one of the, uh, the things. Social environment, absolutely. That was a big part of my life. Uh, you know, you go after work with the guys or even some girls to the bar and what do you do at the bar? I mean, besides socializing, you drink, and the night becomes longer. It becomes more fun as you're drinking uh, because you're being intoxicated. You're escaping reality. So, of course, the uh, social environment has a big part of it. And emotional and stress, those are key. Uh, how many of you folks out there have found that... Uh, you know, your bills are piling up. Oh my God, you, you know, how am I going to find a, uh, find a way to pay the bills? Uh, so you have a drink or two and what happens? I'll tell you what happens. And you all can probably uh, uh, know the answer to this is that you start forgetting about those bills. Uh, things become easier to, to, to laugh about. But guess what? You wake up the next morning and those bills are still there. And, and uh, as you sober up, uh, you'll, you'll see those bills again. So... Anxiety, depression, uh, of course, um, I have found, for me personally, that when I was drinking, uh, I was getting more depressed. I wasn't drinking because I was depressed, because I was never really depressed. Uh, but when I started drinking, I started getting depressed. So, uh, But those are the main factors. Uh, do you have a drinking problem? That is the question. Uh, I'm going to read a couple things, and you know, be honest with yourself. Answer these questions. I can tell you each and every one of these that I'm going to read to you because I did look at this already. I answered yes, 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 yes. First one, feel guilty or ashamed about talking about, about your drinking. In other words, when you talk to people, do you feel guilty or ashamed about your drinking? When I first crashed, which was last June 2013, when I say crash, I'm talking about not a vehicle, talking about when my la life crashed about my alcoholism I was ashamed oh my god I turned 20 shades of red just even thinking about my disease uh, as time went on it became easier for me to talk about it and my main goal now is to talk about it is to help people like you because when I help people like you I help me and not to sound sound selfish or anything but it is about helping me more than anyone else in life because I am responsible for me as a human, as me. But guess what? I want to help you too. So the first question was, do you feel guilty or ashamed about it? K 
Can you answer yes? I can. Did you or do you lie to others to hide your drinking habits? Of course. I was hiding in the shed in the backyard. I was hiding in closets. And when I'm talking about I was hiding, not me physically, but my drinking was. I was hiding the bottles. I didn't want to put them in the garbage. Just got the bit I have a relative or even my wife or children find my bottle. So, yeah, I was hiding and I was lying about it. So the answer again is yes. What's the answer for you? Have friends or family members who are worried about you ever come up to you about your drinking? Have they ever mentioned it? Oh, not so much with friends with me, but it was more family. And thank God they did. It's just very unfortunate it took this many years for it to finally sink in here. So the answer again, yes. How about you? Do you need to drink in order to relax or feel better? The answer right now is no. The answer back then was yes. Because I thought that was the only way for me to relax and feel better. I really did think that's the only way. But guess what? Life goes on. Life is better if you just uh, figure out the way to, to, to make it better. Alcohol is just, it's, it's just a, a, it's a, a drug to make you feel relaxed. Yes, but everything around you that's making you not relax that you had to go to that alcohol is still going to be there when you come back from the alcohol high or the drug addiction or the drug high. So the answer again, yes. Have you ever blacked out? I can tell you again, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I blacked out many a times where I'd wake up and kitchen floor, wake up the next day and say, what, what in the world happened to me? So the answer for me is yes. How about you? What's the answer for you? Do you, do you or did you, and for me it's did, it might be do you, right now for you, drink more than you really either want to or think you need to. I always drank until I was either completely passed out or just feeling so numb that you could have stabbed me with a needle in my finger and I wouldn't have felt it. So the answer, yes. So to all these, do you have a drinking problem? And I know you folks are cons uh, you're seeing that I'm constantly looking down because I do have to kind of look at my, my little sheets here for all this. But uh, the answer is yes to one, two, three, four, five, six questions. So yes, I do have a drinking problem. How about you? Uh, we are going to now talk about common signs of alcoholism or drug or or drug addiction. Uh, if you're using alcohol during dangerous or physical, physically dangerous situations, uh, that 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 does it just doesn't mix. So we need to be careful about that. So I'm going to read this to you: using alcohol in situations where it's physically dangerous, such as drinking and driving. How many of you guys out there are drinking and driving? Did I? Yes, I did. Thank God I was never caught doing it. And thank God I never killed someone doing it. But it's, it's, it's like pointing a gun at someone every time you get behind that wheel and you start drinking. Or drinking before you get behind the wheel. So it's no good. So let me continue. Operating machinery while I'm intoxicated. You forklift drivers, you truck drivers, any type of machinery. Alcohol just doesn't mix with that. It's, it's, it's a murder weapon. Uh, or mixing alcohol with prescription medication. Let me tell you folks something. Um, I take medication for high blood pressure and for cholesterol. And uh, back when, when I was taking it, what would I take it with? It says take with a glass of water. No, I would take it with a beer. I'm talking about counterproductive. So those, those are some signs we need to be careful of. And we need to keep away from those uh, physically dangerous situations, um, especially with the heavy equipment. Let's go to the next one. Experiencing repeated legal problems on account of your drinking, such as drinking and driving. Get pulled over, get handcuffed, go to jail overnight, get bailed out, go to court. $5,000 later, you have a DWI on your hands. Well, let's look at the worst of scenario. You hit somebody, injured, killed someone. Those are major legal problems. Continue to drink even though your alcohol use is causing problems with your relationships. Boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, children, mother, father. Doesn't mix. And it will cause, although you might think it doesn't, and I thought it didn't. It did, and it does. And um, 
thank God it doesn't anymore. So we really, really need to pay attention to all these things. How many of you guys are drinking out there just to feel relaxed? You know, you want to feel relaxed, get a fish tank. No, I'm just kidding, but honestly, we can't do that, okay? Now we're going to talk about drinking problems and denial. If you're having drinking problem, you may deny it by, number one, drastically underestimating how much you drink. So what did you have to drink today? Oh, I only had two. Well, why are you slurring your words and you're falling over when you really had ten? Of course we're going to deny it. How many of you folks are going to admit that you had ten beers or ten shots of drinks? I, I never did. I wouldn't admit to it. Downplaying the, the negative consequences of your drinking. You know, it's bad for your health. That's what people will tell you. It's not good for your relationship. Oh, it's only one or two. Don't worry about it. Okay. Complaining that family and friends are making a bigger uh, drinking problem than it really exists. No, because you're not seeing the clear picture. They are. They're the ones that are sober. You're the one that's drinking, so listen to them. Blaming your drinking on related problems, such as, we talked about this, such as bills, your boss, relationship issues. The only person to be blamed for your drinking problem is you. Because even if it goes back to what we originally talked about, genetics, family history, all those things, you are the person that can stop this. Not your boss, not cable visions, bills, uh, lifers, bills, any of those bills. You you are the captain of your ship. You have to figure out whether you're going to sail on or you're just going to sit dead in that water and keep drinking away. Five myths about alcoholism and alcohol abuse. Myth number one. I can stop drinking anytime I want to. Okay, maybe you can. More than likely, you can't. Either way, it's just an excuse to keep drinking. Yeah, I'll stop tomorrow. Let me just have today and finish my drinks. Okay, doesn't work. I've tried it for years. I one time went for a long time without drinking. I mean, not as long as this, but a long time. But deep down inside, in, in my heart, I knew I wasn't ready. It was only last June 2013 that I knew I was ready. So, that's myth number one. My drinking, uh, myth number two. My drinking is my problem. I'm the one that's hurting. No one has the right to tell me to stop. You're right. You are, again, you're the captain of your own ship. I've said this over and over again. But guess what? You're hurting the people around you. You're hurting yourself. Physically, mentally. But you will lose everything. If it's not your life, it's your... I don't want to sound like a poet. It's your wife, but it's the people around you that love you. Those are the people you're going to lose. Myth number three. I don't drink every day, so I can't be an alcoholic. I drink only one drink or one wine or sometimes just a couple. You're right. There are sociable drinkers. Um, but if you do need to have a drink... Now, here, here's a perfect example. You're going away on a weekend somewhere. and um, Well, I have a better example. When I used to work up in Alaska uh, as an optician, I would go into villages for the Eskimos. Uh, where uh, up in Alaska in the villages they call them um, dry villages and the dry village means no alcohol because of all the uh, domestic abuse and all that so you'd go up there and um, you would have to sneak their alcohol in there if you absolutely needed it and that's that's my way of telling me I needed my alcohol because I had to go in there and and get it so um, that's 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 how that's one way to tell okay uh, myth number four I'm not an alcoholic because I have a job and I'm doing okay. You're right. You're a functioning alcoholic. I am, or I was, uh, able to go to work. Didn't miss a day up until the end of, right before I crashed. I never missed a day of work because of my alcoholism. Last, drinking is not a real addiction like a drug abuse. Yes, it is. Matter of fact, a lot of people you'll hear in the circle of addiction will tell you that alcohol is worse than drugs. The effects of alcoholism and alcohol abuse on people you love. I'm going to read this to you. Despite the potentially lethal damage that heavy drinking does to the body, including cancer, heart problems, and liver disease, 
the social consequences can be just as devastating. Alcoholics and alcohol abusers are such more likely to get divorced, have problems with domestics, violence, struggle, unemployment, and live in poverty. You heard it. Those are the effects of alcoholism. Think about it. Just think. And we're going to go to the last page. And, and sometimes the last is the best. Getting help for alcoholism or alcohol abuse. If you are ready to admit it today, right now, that you have a drinking problem, you have already taken the first step. Just watching this throughout the whole video, whether it's 10 minutes or so, your curiosity sparked enough that tells me that you probably do have a, a, a drug or an alcohol problem. So you do need the help. Um, I'm going to read this to you. It takes tremendous strength and courage to face alcohol or drug abuse. It does. But once you get to that point, it gets so much easier day by day. Reaching out for, uh, for support is the second step. Listen to this video. That's your, that's your first and second step. Um, whether you re uh, choose to go to rehab or go to a program or get therapy or take self-directed treatment approach, anything is better than nothing. Um, my, honestly, my choice is the way I'm doing it right now. I did go to a couple AA meetings. It didn't work for me. Um, this works for me. Helping you helps me. And I've said this from day, maybe this first weekend, this is my way of helping. And that's why I created www.clearviews.info is to, to, to give you videos like this, is to give you the articles, it's to give you, uh, the, um, uh, games that I have on there and other things. There's uh, Amazon has some books on addiction on my website. It's it's my way of helping myself is to help you. Uh, helping loved ones and friends. This is last but not least and the most important. And anybody that's watching out here is either a loved one of mine or a friend. So please listen. You cannot force someone you love to stop abusing alcohol. As much as you may want to, which I can't force anyone, nobody forced me. And as hard as it is to watch, to watch people actually drowning in their alcohol or smoking or sniffing that crack or cocaine, it's hard to watch, but you cannot force them. You cannot make someone stop. The choice is up to them, and it really is. Don't expect the person to stop drinking and stay sober without help. Your loved one will need treatment, support, and new coping skills to overcome serious drinking and alcohol and addiction and a, a drug addiction. Recovery is an ongoing process. Recovery is a bumpy road requiring time and patience. An alcoholic or someone on drugs will not magically become a different person once sober. It requires a lot of work. It requires steps. And the problems that led to the alcohol abuse abuse or drug addiction in the first place will have to be faced head on. I have faced it. I face it every every single day. It's, it's a tough road ahead. If this is your first day, just keep doing it. Take one day at a time, one step at a time. That's all you need to do. Don't, don't think that somebody wants you to be better tomorrow. Just because you're saying today, I quit does not make you completely sober. It's the steps that make you. And I use the example of babies, first crawl, then walk, and then run. And we're all like babies when it comes to addictions and recovery. We first have to crawl, then walk, and then run with it. I'm still crawling, and I'm a year into it now. It's, it's a tough battle ahead of you, but you can do it. A sober today makes for a clear tomorrow. And do me a favor, never, ever, ever give up. Just keep going at it. Don't you dare give up. I hope to see you soon, and have a great day. And stay sober, please.